But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When that which is perfect is come, by Steve Basden, narrated by Michael Trusty. How many times have you heard uh, those proclaiming modern-day miracles cite this phrase and say that the miracles would last until the coming of the Lord, implying that that which is perfect could only be the Lord Jesus? I personally have heard this argument all my life. And I've heard the typical response to that claim. I was always taught that that which is perfect cannot be Jesus because Jesus is not a that. I was taught that the Bible never refers to deity in such a manner. I was taught that that which is perfect refers to the Bible being completed. The complete law of liberty, James chapter 1 and the verse 25. And that which is able to make a man perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, which is all scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. I held to that understanding. I understood it that way. I taught it to others that way. I was wrong. That which is perfect certainly includes the completion of the written word, the Bible, but far more than just the completion of revelation from God. The word perfect is translated from the Greek teleos, being complete in various applications of labor, growth, mental and moral character. It's neuter as a noun, completeness, of full age, man, perfect. It does not mean that that which is without blemish or fault. It means completeness. Question. What was still incomplete? When Paul wrote this, was Paul looking forward to something happening in order for completeness to be considered, having come? Certainly the word of God at that time still had to come in its completeness. But was that all? Would the word of God only by itself fulfill that which still had not happened that Paul was looking forward to coming? Certainly not. You see, Paul was looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and the verse 7. He was looking for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 8. He was looking for or the end, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and the verse 24. He was looking for the deliverance of the kingdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and the verse 24. He was looking for the resurrection. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 15 too. Which by the way he promised the Corinthians that they would not all die before the resurrection would come. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 51 through 52. He was looking for the sting of death to be taken away and Hades to be conquered. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 55. He was looking for victory over the strength of sin. The law must be the Old Testament law. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 56. In short, he was looking for what Jesus promised when he said, that which is complete. He was looking for fulfillment of all prophecy. Luke chapter 21. Verses 20 through 32. Paul's expectations could never have been complete if still lacking. Never. In fact, regarding the end of miracles, Paul told the Corinthians that they would have the miraculous gifts until Jesus came. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the verses 7 through 8. But then we have the audacity to turn around and say that Paul meant the written word of God in its fullness there in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and the verse 10. No way. That which is perfect meant that which is complete. And it meant everything promised would be fulfilled. And only then would the miracle cease. That which is perfect includes the written word, but it also includes all prophecy. Just as Paul was teaching, and as Jesus taught, Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 18, Luke chapter 21, 
the verses 20 through 32. Matthew chapter 16, the verses 27 through 28. Matthew chapter 12, the verses 41 through 42. Jesus came when he promised, or he didn't. If he didn't, we might as well throw the Bible away. If he did, we better be accepting it and teaching it as it was taught 2,000 years ago.